A couple weeks ago, I featured this tiny home and I was gonna purchase it for myself because it's absolutely adorable. <laughs> I won't be able to purchase this house. After I filmed it, I was like really investigating how I could purchase this tiny home for my daughter. And I found out there's five really good reasons why I can't. And I'm gonna share those with you today. So let's take a look inside. One big reason why I couldn't buy this tiny home is I wasn't allowed to get a regular loan for it. So typically when you get a house, you have a mortgage with either FHA, a conventional loan, or even an, a rural development loan, which is pretty common here in our area. But here with a tiny house, you would have to get a personal loan, which the interest rate on those is pretty high. Even if your credit's really good, it's still going to be above 10%. If your credit is terrible, it's going to be like 13, 14, sometimes even 20% to get a loan for something like this. Now, of course, if you have cash and you can just shell out $39,000, you're going to be in like Flint. But there's other factors that come into play when you go to purchase these tiny homes that I was completely unaware of until I try to investigate it myself. So as many of you know, locations are probably the one of the most difficult parts of having a tiny manufactured home. A lot of times people will build them themselves, they put them all up, and then the county or the parish or even the state will tell them they have to take them down because they don't meet some kind of city ordinance. Before you put in any manufactured home, tiny home, or shed, or any building, make sure you get it permitted first. You must check with your local area to see if it's allowed. And sometimes they'll allow it, but they'll take out certain things. Like in some areas, they say you can have a tiny manufactured home, but you can't have a stove in there. Or you can have uh, a tiny manufactured home, but it can't have plumbing. So definitely check before you put down any building or structure on a piece of property, not just tiny homes. I know that because of the popularity of tiny homes, some of the uh, thought process has changed in many areas, like these areas that I'm about to show you right now. I'd like to welcome you to Spur, Texas, the first town in the United States to welcome tiny houses, and it invites you to settle down. While employment opportunities are sparse, local officials say self-sufficient individuals looking to set up businesses will appreciate the cheap real estate. Likewise, the cost of living in Spur is about 30% less than the national average. If you're interested in living in Spur, Texas and want to know more about the neighbors, they have a blog on spurfreedom.org. In Portland, Oregon, you can visit Roos Garden Cottages. Green home builder Orange Spot constructed the two 526 square foot ADUs shared here in a client's backyard. Each one has a full porch, bathroom, and a sleeping loft. The inhabitants share a kitchen and the primary dwelling. Now we head over to Arizona to the Lux Tiny Community. They're in the midst of creating the first tiny house community in the White Mountains of Arizona, consisting of 45 spaces on six acres. Lease rates for the plots are around 360 or less. Homes to buy are starting at $64,900, or you can rent starting at $800 a month. All residents will have access to 19,000 square feet of green walking space. It comes to tiny homes, and even some people have been doing really great things with the idea of tiny homes, and they've been putting them down and helping the homeless. There's a real estate agent that has been helping veterans get back on their feet after they've been homeless. And they have these tiny homes as temporary housing to get them on their feet. So that way in the future, they can buy their own house. I think this is a fantastic idea. And it's something I'm putting out in the universe. There's about 40,000 homeless veterans in the United States right now. That's according to a census poll in 2017. And my big goal, my big three-year goal is to help the uh, homeless problem with the veterans here in the United States. And I think we can do it with either manufactured homes or tiny homes. My brain has been on fire ever since I've like adopted this idea and these videos for tiny homes and manufactured homes have taken off. I think we can work together and do this. <laughs> I'm not sure how we're gonna do it and I, I intend to make it happen. So if you guys know anybody, please contact me. All my contact information is in the description.
<laughs> so, okay, let's just say you found the perfect spot for your tiny home. You've already checked with your county and everything's perfect. They say you're allowed to do it. And then you already ha have the cash to purchase it. You don't even need financing. So you go and have your tiny home put down. The next problem that a lot of people run into is the insurance for them. Anytime you have something this expensive, of course you're going to want to insure it. The contents inside, the structure itself, and this is where the problem comes in. Because it's such a small structure, insurance companies have a hard time calling it a home or dwelling. And then they treat it almost like an RV, especially if it has wheels. Uh, other times, some insurance companies are like, they're not touching it with a 10 foot pole. So always check with your insurance companies prior to purchasing any kind of tiny home so that way you can make sure that you're covered everybody has issues that happen over time anything can happen so always have insurance on anywhere you live I'm trying to show you this bathroom. It only has a little tiny shower. Um, it's a really cute little place. I mean, it's it's not too bad. The shower is like typical of uh, an RV shower, I guess you'd say. Uh, yeah, see? And I'm about 5'1". And then this is, and I can put my hands all the way top. Okay, so my other problem with tiny manufactured homes, with me being a real estate agent, I have a problem with the fact of resale. There isn't enough information or data out there that tells you how well they resell. And I have a feeling, a gut feeling, I'm just going by gut, that they probably don't resell very well. As cute as they are, if once they've been lived in, and since they're so inexpensive to make yourself, a lot of people are not purchasing an older one, they're just going ahead and deciding to make their own. But this is where my brain really started clicking. The reason I wanted to purchase it for my daughter is even if she moved out in like three years and didn't want it anymore, it would make a fantastic rental property. What a fantastic way to build up rent, especially like in this area, rent is super expensive. If you're thinking about purchasing a tiny home, don't think about selling it, think about renting it out because that would be income that's coming in all the time and the investment would be very small, especially for a small tiny home. <laughs> This is like my favorite room. It has, it actually even has built-ins. So you don't even have to bring your furniture. So it's already saving your room in this tiny little house. And it has a, it has a little cathedral ceilings too. So it makes you feel like you're really like in a bigger space. So another issue that a lot of people are gonna have and now that it being tax season, if it is your permanent dwelling in your residence, guess what? This isn't a tax deduction. Because you know, normally when you have a typical mortgage, you're gonna have a tax deduction on your house. But on a tiny home, there is no tax deduction. So that is one thing you're gonna have to consider in the long run if you really want to do a tiny home, that you're not gonna get that tax break that you normally would with a typical mortgage. This is my favorite part of this tiny home, is this loft. It doesn't have a lot of headroom. As you know, I'm only 5'1", I'm only and I'm on my knees, but <laughs> I love this tiny home. It is available here in Ascension Parish. They're, they're asking $39,000 for it. Uh, but if you wanna make one yourself, they have these kits that you can make by Amazon. Just know that there is no insulation, there's no roofing materials, no, there's no plumbing materials. My name is Christina Smallhorn, your real estate whisperer, and I tell you all this because you matter.